Scientist who discovered GMOs cause tumors in rats wins landmark defamation lawsuit in Paris, November 30th, 2015. Was French professor Gilles-Éric Serralini correct when he discovered that scientific feeding experiments past 90 days with GMO foods in rats can cause serious health problems, including tumors? The answer to that question has been debated ever since the initial publication of his study, culminating in a republication of the study in another peer-reviewed journal that wasn't nearly as well covered as the initial retraction was by the mainstream media. Now, Professor Serralini is in the news again, this time for winning a major court victory in a libel trial that represents the second court victory for Serralini and his team in less than a month. Pay close attention to what you are about to see. These images will be seen around the world. These rats have been fed with transgenic corn during their entire life cycle. The tumors they suffer from are enormous. The study that revealed the effect of the GMOs on the health of these rats has just been completed. It benefited from exceptional financial and technical means. We were able to witness the study in its entirety. It lasted for two years Following years of doubt and controversies, will we finally know the truth about GMOs? Would we then be faced with a health crisis of global proportions? This is the longest, most thorough study to have been carried out on a GMO, and we have also carried out a joint study on the most used pesticide in the world, the Roundup, which is a herbicide. It belongs to the main pesticide category. We spent over a year trying to obtain transgenic corn because no GMO manufacturers were willing to provide them. This is because Monsanto requires contracts to be signed stipulating that the seeds must not be used for testing and an arrangement must be made prior to the testing. We wanted our study to be independent. This is the first time that a two-year study has been conducted on GMOs. And there lies the big difference. Furthermore, we tried to evaluate a maximum of biochemical and biological parameters with repeated blood tests, weighing of the specimens, and urine tests. We studied the hepatic and urinary parameters, as well as the blood parameters, all the parameters that can be studied. We also studied the hormonal parameters, which has never been done in previous studies. This experiment is a world premiere. Up until now, the corn NK603, the very one selected for the study, had only been tested over a three-month period, and that in a test environment entirely controlled by Monsanto, its manufacturer. Furthermore, concerning the Roundup, also manufactured by Monsanto and which is used for growing corn, only its active agent, glyphosate, had been assessed. But one needs to understand that the manufacturers, in order to enable the active agent to penetrate the plant cell successfully, use additives that are sometimes more harmful than the actual glyphosate. Le but is double. We have two clear objectives. Firstly, to conduct the studies exactly according to international requirements, but making sure to be very thorough when it comes to analyzing the results. Secondly, we want to determine if there are secondary effects. The only way to do this is to carry out tests on animals and then to examine all the blood parameters whilst paying close attention to their organs. At this stage, it might prove useful to know exactly what GMOs are used for. It is a plant that has been developed either to produce its own insecticide or to be tolerant to a herbicide, thus enabling it to be exposed to massive doses of it without dying. One can understand how GMOs could be useful to farmers. For example, they would be able to spray their entire field with Roundup, killing all the weeds in the process and never harming the genetically modified plant. On the other hand, it is hard to see the benefits for the consumer, who will effectively be ingesting substances coming from a plant that has absorbed pesticides. That is why it is crucial to test not only the GMO, but also the GMO with its residue and the pesticide on its own.
This type of testing had never been done before because the corporations doing the tests would do them on GMOs with the Roundup, which meant that we had no idea what between the GMO and the Roundup caused the pathologies, or they did them on GMOs without specifying that this was the case. So what we decided to do was to address the question, are we dealing with the effects of the GMO or the pesticide? During the last 10 years of testing, the national commissions did not envisage a pesticide effect. Therefore, Europe does not even demand that chronicle toxicity tests be systematically carried out on animals, and when they are required, it is the manufacturers who decide the protocol to be used. For example, the Amflora potato was only tested on a group of 30 rats, 10 of which were being fed the GMO. The Monsanto corn was tested on 400 rats. 80 of them were fed the transgenic plant, but only 40 of them were then subjected to blood tests. Either way, none of these studies lasted longer than 90 days. What is represented by this figure is that certain groups of rats, male and female, have ingested GMO corn. GMO corn with Roundup residue and Roundup on its own. Every time we go up a level, a rat dies. The limit is 10 due to the number of rats that constitute a group. The dotted line represents the females of the group who die but have a completely normal diet. Only two animals die spontaneously after 550 days. On the other hand, every female that has been fed on the GMO, GMO with Roundup or Roundup diet has died more frequently than the other rats. Some will challenge the relevance of such results, but what is undeniable is that in the group that has been exposed to the GMOs, there is a 600% increase or six times more deaths compared to the control group. As far as medicine or biology is concerned, there is no need for further testing. An important fact is that all the studies carried out on the rats are done over a three-month period. It so happens that none of the effects are visible until the fourth month. This is fundamental in understanding that studies conducted over a three-month period are useless. This conclusion is easily understandable. It could be said that their only use is to soothe the consciences. Every rat out of the 200 that were tested was dissected by Professor Serralini's team. They did this to discover exactly what had affected their organs. The purpose behind this was to identify the way each diet, GMO, GMO and Roundup, and Roundup on its own, had acted on the metabolism of each animal, focusing on the development rate of the tumors that, and this comes as no surprise, only start to manifest themselves after the initial three-month period. This figure represents the number of palpable tumors contracted by the animal during the experiment. Here, we can see the rats subjected to GMOs compared to those with a regular diet. As you can see, very few males have contracted tumors. This is due to them being more resistant to the testing process. What these figures show are the large tumors. Each step up represents a large tumor, which can measure 17 millimeters by 17 millimeters. For a rat, these measurements are colossal. It would equate to a tumor of this size if seen on a human being. It is enormous. After having studied these tumors, it can be said that 94% of them take effect in the mammary glands, which would equate to breast cancer in a woman. We are faced with renal tumors for the males, but not only, some males also suffer from mammary tumors. This points towards a hormonal effect that isn't affected by the dosage. 60% of breast cancer cases are caused by hormonal deficiencies. Professor Serralini's study holds one last surprise for us, and this is a major one. Up until now, one could have thought that the main cause of death for the tested rats was coming from the pesticide added to the corn. But what the study highlighted, and this for the first time ever, is the fact that the transgenesis itself could have killed the rats. What this means is that just by interfering with the genome of the plant in order to modify it, we are faced with repercussions that no one could have anticipated. This is enough to make us reconsider all the scientific precepts that led to the creation of GMOs. Roundup had never been tested separately. 
Whilst conducting cellular studies, we saw that the cells of the liver, embryos, kidneys, placenta and the umbilical cord died much faster and so we could deduce that there was a toxic effect on the organism. What can be said is that there is an increase in deaths due to GMOs and roundups. The biggest surprise came when we realized that GMOs without any roundup residue were responsible for an increase in the death rate of females and of some males. This could be the result of the GMO gene that has been badly assimilated by the plant and that has therefore resulted in a negative effect or due to a secondary metabolical effect. What that means is that we are dealing with a GMO in particular, the modification of a cereal or a GMO corn. With regard to the genes inserted in the corn to make it a GMO corn can result in different effects. It is not because a certain GMO has a particular effect that other GMOs will have an effect, but some may even have more of an impact. What is alarming, uh, this is the GMO that is being eaten by the Americans, but also the GMO that has been approved for importation by European agencies, including the French ones, and that obviously contaminates our food. Nowadays, only two types of GMOs are being produced in a few European countries. One is corn and the other potato. But what about the 27 million tons of transgenic soya that are unloaded each year in European ports? This soya is used to feed our cattle, but it also makes its way into a number of foodstuffs. <laughs> What we want to achieve with this study is a moratorium. The situation is serious enough and we're not going to eat everything and anything. We imported without knowing what was being imported and the United States have produced crops without knowing what they were producing. There needs to be more studies of this kind and GMO manufacturers need to conduct them before commercializing their products. A moratorium on growing GMOs has been approved by most European countries. Now that we know the results of the study conducted by Professor Serralini, could it be time to extend this moratorium to all the GMO used in many of our foods? To establish an undeniable scientific truth, one needs teams, time and means. Some will say that it takes too much time and that it is too expensive. But had we taken this precaution, could we not have avoided recent sanitary scandals? Will GMOs be responsible yet again for a calamitous scenario? And while we are waiting for scientific certainties, evidently, this is a risk we cannot afford to take. <laughs>